In today's video, we will be using some beautiful paints and pigments to pour over some unique tools to swipe a palette knife through and also to use our favorite new wedge. So stay tuned, that's coming up next. Hello my friends, welcome to another video. So I'm back home from North Carolina. Uh, Canela Sirocco and myself held a fluid art workshop this past weekend in Charlotte, North Carolina. And can I just say, it was an absolute honor, privilege, amazing experience to meet some of you. And uh, we had such a great time. I'm so sad that it's over, but you know, these things must move forward. Time goes on and we must leave our good times behind and search for new ones. So for everyone that attended that's watching me right now, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming out and seeing us. So today I'm going to have some fun and I'm going to not only teach you, and experiment with you, but we're also going to create a beautiful painting, hopefully with the help of a few tools, one being a new one for me. Although it's not new to the pouring world, I'm going to try to use it in a different way because it is new to me and I wanna use it other than what it's used for. So the item I speak of is this little guy right here, which is a, device that you pour your paint in the circle it falls out of these grooves here and creates flower petals for me however what i want to do is i want to use it to create a flower but i'm not going to do what you typically would do which would be lay a napkin on it and pull it up and you know it's called a reverse flower dip uh, I want to try something different and I'll explain as I go on. The other thing I'm going to be experimenting with is this blackest black paint from Culture Health Cell. I want to try it as a cell activator and I'm seeing some shocking results in my cup, which I hope is going to translate to the canvas. So that's another thing we're going to be doing. We're also going to be using my favorite new tool, the Catalyst Number no. 4 Wedge. This is from Princeton uh, Tools for Artists. I had a link in the description, but I think they're sold out on Amazon. But give it a, a check and maybe back in stock. We're also going to be using our handy dandy palette knives and some pigments. We're going to be using some of those. Now, how my paints are mixed is like this. I take Sherwin-Williams brand Ovation. It's a purple can only sold at Lowe's. It's a Lowe's exclusive. Lowe's also has a gold can called Infinity. They both work great. You want the can to say semi-gloss on the top, and then on the bottom of it, you want it to say base C. C as in Charlie. My paints are mixed with some of that and then some of Joe Sonia gloss varnish. Now the measurements, not important. I'm going to show you how I mix this stuff. What I do is I take the untinted base paint from Lowe's, the Sherwin-William Ovation or Infinity. I'll get whatever size container because I like to make my pouring medium ahead of time and store it so that I'll have it for when I'm ready to do a painting and don't have to mix this every single time. So I got this container here. I fill it up about a little under three quarters of the way. It, again, the measurements really do not matter. So about three quarters of the way, we'll say. And then about a quarter of that amount. So maybe this much of varnish, mix it together. That is it. I pour some into my little cups 
and then I add my pigments or my tube paints to it. That is as simple as it gets. Now, when it comes to knowing how thick your colors need to be for this technique, what I do is I use my house paint as my guide to show me. So this house paint is from Walmart. It's called Color Place. Uh, I did test out the new brand that Walmart is carrying because they replaced this. It was color something. It was a black label. Semi-gloss again. You want all of your products to match in the sheen department. So the base that I mix my colors into is a, a semi-gloss. So is my white paint that I'm putting on the canvas first. This is a semi-gloss white wall paint. All right. So this one, I don't do anything to. I don't thin it down. I don't put anything in it. So because this is how thick my base paint is going to be, my flood coat, or my you can call it a flood coat or a pillow coat, pillow paint, sorry. Um, this is what I want my colors and my cell activator to match because I'm not thinning this and they all need to be the same consistency. So because... This one has nothing in it. I use this as my guide as how thick to make my colors. All right. So what I'll do is I'll put in some of that medium that I made into my cups. Again, amount doesn't matter. If you put a little bit, you're only going to make a little bit of that color. Um, if you put a lot, you'll make a lot of that color. So I'll put in for these little cups about a tablespoon of paint about, you know, fill it up three quarters of the way with that base that I made. And then I'll feel it and look at it and look how it looks when I drip it off the stick onto the surface. If it looks and does the same thing that my white paint is doing, I leave it alone. If it's too thick, I add a little water until it does look like my house paint, okay? If it's too thin, you got to add a little more paint to it to thicken it up. Everything wants to match this one here, or I should say needs to match this white house paint that you've done nothing to. And then the third part of this process that I mix up is my cell activator. For that, I use Australian Floetrol. Um, I get this through Pixel Paint Designs. Link is in the description. She's the only one that offers a discount in the United States and therefore is the cheapest to get it from. You can buy little bottles of, you know, little sample bottles on Etsy, but it works out better if you just buy this. I know it's expensive, but it lasts forever and it's well worth it. So I take this product here along with either white or black paint from Amsterdam or Golden. I like to use Golden's Black Heavy Body uh, Carbon Black Paint. Sorry. Either that or this, depending on what color you want to make. I put some in a cup. Again, however much of this you put in a cup will depend, will determine how much cell activator you make. So I'll put about, you know, three tablespoons in a cup and I'll start adding this here slowly until it is the same consistency as my white paint, all right? So my cell activator is the same thickness as my white house paint, and my colors are the same thickness as my white house paint. If you want a step-by-step -step mixing tutorial on this one recipe, I will put that in the description for you. Let me show you my colors. I have some really beautiful, um, this is like a, I don't know, a purple violet. And it is called Temptation. This here is called Jasmine. Now these are my primary elements that I'm using. And then the last one I have is called Irish Mist. And I know this color palette is weird, but it will make sense. And then I have some fluorescent pink by Golden. 
I have some lemon yellow from Amsterdam. Yellow green Amsterdam. Medium green Amsterdam. And fluorescent orange yellow golden. The last thing I want to talk about is the black. This is According to the website, the blackest black paint that you can get. Um, it's very expensive. I'm going to put the, the link in the description for you. It is very, very black. I want to test it as a cell activator in place of the golden. So I always start off by putting my white house paint on the canvas and tilting it around. This is the easiest way for me to do that so that I ensure I get a flat, even coat. And what I'm going to do is just tell you about a few of the things I used to create this painting. And then I'm going to let you watch me create it because, boy, it took me down a path I did not expect to go. Sometimes with fluid art, though, it is in control. You are not in control. So I used this flower pouring tool to create the petals of my flower. And my idea was to swipe them out into petals and then come back in with the greens and create vines with my catalyst wedge. However, you're gonna see here shortly that it took an alternate route and I got a flower, but it's more of a Medusa looking flower than a let's say orchid looking flower <laughs> and when I say Medusa I mean the petals just were going wild so I'm gonna let you watch here uh, I did end up using some paper towels that I cut into strips I dipped them right into my black cell activator and they actually worked pretty good to make some really cool looking designs so enjoy the creation of my Medusa flower and I will be back shortly. So this is just a silicone brush that I'm using to pull some of the color out. I was just kind of playing around with the paint. It's totally not necessary to do this when you see what I do next, but it was just a little bit of art therapy for me. That's all. All right, here's my crazy idea.
<laughs> I either use a palette knife because I want to get some beautiful petals coming out here with some beautiful lacing. I either use the palette knife in one swoosh and change the shape of the petal or I do something really, really dumb and try to go side by side with two palette knives and kind of swipe out this way. I don't know if I could do that because I'm pulling back like this. And as soon as I get to about right here, my boobs are in the way. <laughs> so, oh boy. Let me try the one knife idea first. I'm going to take some black cell activator. So essentially I use that tool to shape my petals. Now, usually what you do is you, you lay a napkin over it and you pull the napkin up and you have a pretty painting, uh, a flower painting. But I don't want to go typical. You know, I want to try something different here. So let's try the palette knife first and see where it takes us. Spread out some cell activator nice and thin on the back of my knife. Yes, I could use white cell activator, but I prefer the black. I feel like it makes the colors look more pronounced. So I'm going to, I wish I had a bigger pie cutter. Actually, I just thought of something. I can make my own swipe tool. What I'm going to do is take a piece of plastic from packaging and I'm going to trace this shape right here. So we're going to kind of, let's see, they'll have a rounded area here. It's kind of. this and then like that okay it'll be straighter but I'll cut this out I'll get the hot glue out and glue a skewer to the top of it so that I can have something to hold on to and then I'll use that for my palette knife watch this this is a poor man's version of a swipe check it out y'all <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. So let's try it out. It's probably going to fall right off of the stick, but let's give it a shot. A fair shot. I'll put some cell activator on the back of it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, oh well. Who cares? <laughs> We're having a good time. Well, I'm having a good time. Hopefully you're having a good time laughing at me. So a nice thin layer on the back of that instead of the palette knife. Okay, check it out. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put it right on there. You see me shaking? We're gonna pull back. I hope I didn't. Ah, I waited way too long to do this probably because uh, paint's starting to thicken up, but. Let me go with it. Let me try my, since I just went and did that, let me try my other knife here. How much worse can it get? See, I wanted to kind of make pretty petals like that. Sort of. Let me keep going with the knife. I like that. I like my little invention, but it made a prettier mark on the, the uh, <laughs> table when I wiped it off than it did on the canvas. So, ooh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Now I'm getting excited. We'll make some pretty kind of, some kind of a orchid or something. Maybe. 
<laughs> we can maybe we could call it an orchid. Oh, that is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Wait till you see it up close. So I wanted my petals to be more rounded at the end and pointy at the tip. And it was kind of impossible to get that with this palette knife. Plus, I wasn't actually moving the palette knife in the direction I would need to do that now that I'm watching this. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just had fun with it, guys. This is all stress relief for me. But I will, however, say that little tool I made, I should not have given up so quick on it because it actually worked pretty good. I just needed a little bit of practice. But just like all of you, I also get nervous when I have all this paint on the canvas. It's very intimidating sometimes. And I tend to not want to play around too much and go with what I know works. And I know that the palette knife works for me. So... I'm going to save that tool and I'm going to give it a try again. Now here's where I took the paper towel and dipped it into some black cell activator. And look how nice that worked. So yeah, I think for my next video, well, not my next one because I already have something planned for that. But in the very near future, I'm just going to use some paper towels, some paints, and that plastic tool I made to create a painting and see where it takes me especially the paper towel because as you can see you can get some nice contours and rounded edges with it it's pretty fun and that black paint was working excellent as a cell activator I have a few more swipes to go here with my little catalyst wedge and we are done okay I'm done <laughs> I'm done playing <laughs> boy my plan went totally sideways I had a plan to make this cute little flower in the middle have the petals flow out with the lacing and cells like kind of like I was doing here and then come in with some green and add some viner vinery with the catalyst wedge but this just developed into something different and I like it I'm not messing with it because I foresee the future and what it's going to look like when it's done I'm going to put in some glitter and um yeah I'm not gonna mess with it so let me just show you how pretty this is really I hope you enjoyed this video, my friends. As I told everybody in the workshop, you know, you can only learn so much from a teacher. The artist, the design, the composition, the idea, that all has to come from you. We cannot teach you that. As you just saw here, I had a totally different plan and it led me elsewhere. So... I could teach you how to mix the paint. I could tell you how to use certain things to add them to the canvas. What I cannot teach you how to do is turn your painting exactly into this, if that makes sense. So use your imagination. 
Look around online for some ideas to inspire you. Pinterest is a great place. Uh, if you see someone's work that you absolutely love and you want to make that, just make sure you, you know, give them some credit because people can tend to get upset about that kind of thing. I don't, but a lot of people do. And, um, you know, just, you know, use your imagination, as, as I said. So let me give you a little flash here. So you can see all the pretty colors. Be sure to check out the description for coupons for not only primary elements and color art products, but also resin, which makes these colors shimmer beautifully. Uh, Australian Floetrol, again, she is the cheapest in the U.S. now with a discount. And the only one that offers a discount, actually. And uh, for, the, for the full, you know, half liter and liter bottles I'm talking about. And, um, yeah, there's a bunch of information in that description, including my upcoming class right now. It's in, uh, Connecticut in April. So if you're a Northeasterner and want to come visit the beautiful Northeast, nope, that's wrong, Tammy. They would already be in the Northeast. If you're not in the Northeast and want to come visit, come on down. And uh, for those that are here, I'm almost, I'm close to being booked for that class. So if you want to get a seat for that, you got to make your deposit kind of like now to save a seat. All right. I love you all. Thank you so very, very much for joining me. Do not forget to come back Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to see what I do with these bloom plumes I've been making, okay? I love you all. Happy pouring.